Welcome back, folks. This is Steve, KM9G. And when I was down in Ohio for the Youth on the Air Camp, I went over and visited RNL Electronics, spoke with Roger for a little bit. Uh, Roger was a humongous supporter of the uh, Youth on the Air Camp. And he handed me one of these things and said, play with it on your channel. So that's what I'm going to do today. Let's get over to the bench and open it up and take a look at it. Tiny Spectrum Analyzer. All right, so I don't know a whole heck of a lot about test equipment like this, but uh, how do you learn? How do you find stuff out? You open it up and you get after it. So let's open it up and see what's inside. All right, so nice box, nice uh, nice presentation. It's got a little, uh, little foam pad in the top, but that's good. What else do we have here? We have a USB to, oh, it's purple. Haha, <laughs> hey, it's purple. A USB to USB-C cable, awesome. We have a tiny little guitar pick for the tiny little guitar that's buried in this box somewhere. Equally awesome. We have an SMA female to SMA female adapter. We'll probably figure out what that is useful for. We have an SMA whip, whip antenna. It's pretty strong and sturdy. We have a couple of SMA test leads. And these are male on each end. Not too bad. And then, <laughs> what is this, we have like a sticker here or something? Yeah, there's a little sticker in the in the bin telling us to go to tinysa.org. We will visit that at some point in the future. And then finally, the moment you've all been waiting for out of its protective sleeve is the Tiny SA. And they were not kidding. This thing is in fact tiny, very tiny. My, uh, my grid here is measured in inches, so let's take a look. Down in the corner, you can't see down in the corner. Let's start at the, the 10 mark. So that's three and a half inches by two and a quarter inches by, eh, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, five eighths. So it's pretty tiny. All right, hold on, let's zoom in for that. Right there. Nice. All right, we'll zoom back out. The shenanigans are over with. Well, we probably still need to zoom in because of how small this thing is. Okay, well, have some have some fun with the camera. That's awesome stuff. Um, it's got a that's my that's my chin. It's got a nice shiny reflective screen. This ought to be fun to film with all the. You can see all my lights. Where are they? Nope, too far. All right, enough of the shenanigans. We have USB-C, we have an on-off switch, we have a little jog wheel. We have a little hole to slide our lanyard attachment in. And this says, Tiny Spectrum Analyzer, frequency 100 kilohertz to 350 megahertz, and 240 megahertz to 960 megahertz. It's powered by 5 volt USB, and... Oh no. First, first attack of the old man eyes. The hardware version is, where are we? 0.3.1E, and then it's got a serial number and it says avoid static discharge, designed by Eric in Netherlands, assembled in China. So there you go. So that's the, the tiny SA fits in the palm of your hand. So now you can analyze all the spectrums in the palm of your hand. On the front side you have a high port, a low port, it says plus 10 dBm RF 10 volts DC max, so don't overload your spectrum analyzers, folks. So what is a spectrum analyzer? What can you do with a spectrum analyzer? Well, I mean, I guess the obvious thing, thank you, printer, I guess the obvious thing is you can analyze spectrums with it. Um, and I know the first thing everybody's gonna ask me to do is calibrate it, but I gotta turn it on first. Let's turn it on and see if we can see that on screen. That's not, that's not terrible. Oh, that, that's pretty bad. My lightsaber. 
Okay, lots of lighting. No, no good lighting angle. It was either too much light or not enough light. All right, it is what it is. I can't even see it at all unless I look through the camera screen. That's going to be fun. Okay, so I'm going to be a little awkwardly wobbling around as I try to touch things, looking through my camera screen, looking down at the device that I can't see here. Okay, let's zoom in some more. All right, I can see that a little bit better. All right, so right off the bat, we are starting at zero hertz down here on a 50 megahertz scale, and we are stopping at 350 megahertz, and there is nothing going on in the area here. Let's pull out our Magic Wonder guitar pick and touch the screen. Oh, and I got stuff on my camera screen, so I can't see through it. All right, preset, frequency, level, display, marker, measure, config. Let's do config. Touch, self-test, level calibration, version, spur removal. Why would I want to remove the spurs? I kind of want to see the spurs. Expert config, DFU, and back. Let's hit level calibrate, and let's hit calibrate. And I know it's not going to work because I'm not hooked up properly on purpose. Signal level too low, check cable between high and low connectors, which is what I expected to see. What they want you to do is they want you to take this little SMA gender changer and these two... SMA test leads and they want you to connect them together so let's connect that to oh, to that and then we need to remove the protected caps from the high and low ports and then we need to connect the high port to the low port And this is how you calibrate this device here. All right, so let's rerun the calibration. Tap. Oh, the, the lanyard is springy. So tap, level calibrate, calibrate. Calibration complete. I have seen folks have trouble with the included test leads, so it's nice to see that these actually work. Excellent. All right, so let's jog wheel it. What do we do with the jog wheel? Uh, we move the little marker along the, along the ramp down there at the bottom. And then at the top, it tells us what it's seeing. So right now we're at 50.8 megahertz. And it's moving in almost whole megahertz increments. Okay. Excellent. So it's off the charts here at the beginning at zero, minus 11 dB. And then as we start moving along, we get down to the end. And this, the two ports are connected together. Let me disconnect those guys. And we'll just explore some more features. All right, so there is my connected test leads with my open ends on the far end and my high and low ports not connected to anything. All right. So what can you do with this thing? Well, like I said, it's a spectrum analyzer. It can analyze the spectrum, the whole spectrum. Well, not the whole spectrum, but the spectrum from 100 kilohertz to 960 megahertz. And what do we have in that range? In the Well, we've got quite a lot of stuff available in that range but this little dinky antenna doesn't do quite a lot of stuff this antenna is 12 inches in length so not good for any bands that I'm interested in but you can receive a lot of different things on antennas that are not in the band that the antenna is resonant on because the antennas can hear better than they can transmit for sure and I've already got a fingerprint smudge on the screen right there. I don't know how that happened. Yuck. That just made it so much better. All right, hang on. Let me get that cleaned up. That's going to make a horrible video. All right, that's a little bit better. That's why they include the stylus, so you don't get your dirty fingerprints on it. And I wasn't trying. It just happened when I did the, uh, what's it called? When I did the antenna screw-in thing. Okay, so we are back looking at what this thing can do. Let's do preset. And we have no presets. Let's load startup. 
Okay, so start is 0 to 350 megahertz sweep. Excellent. Let's hit it again. Let's do frequency. Start frequency, stop frequency, center frequency, span, zero span, RBW. Let's do center. And then let's try, I don't know, FM broadcast band. So let's do center on 95 megahertz. And it's saying that there is something at 81.82. Let's move the wheel around. That's too low. All right, so we are centered, and we have a span of 190 megahertz. So that's 20 to 190. That's that's a pretty big span. Let's see what we can do to change the span down, and let's change that down to 20 megahertz. Okay, let's change the center up to 100 megahertz. Is there anything in there in that range? That's pretty interesting. I wonder what that is. But that's what this is all about, is exploring this kind of stuff. Okay, let's go even higher. Well, first off, we're on the low port, and the low port is supposed to be 100 to 350. So we're definitely in the range of that 100 to 350. So we should definitely be hearing something there. Let's go, what's this RBW? What does RBW mean? Let's try 30 kilohertz. And we redid the sweep. It looks like it's gonna take a couple of sweeps each time. You can see the little green bar going across the bottom of the screen there. So you change the real time analysis of it. Let's do RBW, let's go back to auto. And now it's back to being interesting looking. Okay. What else can we find on here? Back. Level. Reference level, scales per division, attenuate. Unit. Let's change the unit to watts. I don't know. All right. Pretty interesting. Let's change, let's play with trigger. What does trigger do? Up edge, mid trigger, down edge, normal. All right, let's go back. Let's do marker, marker ops, center. Okay, so we moved the spectrum around a little bit when we did that. Let's go back, let's do display. Pause, calc, you can do calculations, nice. Quasi-peak calculation. Okay, so that changes the, how the display is rendered. Waterfall, oh, look at that, waterfall. That's pretty cool. All right, so now let's zoom out a bit. And bring some other toys in frame. I happen to have, and my antenna's a little bigger, I happen to have yellow fang here. So let's turn on Yellow Fang. And we are tuned to 146.630, which happens to be the frequency of my All Star node here. So now what I want to do is change this to listen to 146.630. So we'll go back, we'll pick a frequency, we'll center on one, whoops. 1466.6630 megahertz. It said 136. Did I type in 136? 146.630 megahertz. Okay, no. So that's just the span. All right, and then what will happen is. Actually, I have, for some unknown reason, I have my hotspot set up on a split frequency. So 
let's try this radio here instead. This is a BTEC 6x2 and I've got this set on low power and it has its own antenna and the SA has its own antenna and so does my hotspot across the room. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to key up which is going to hit my hotspot and my hotspot's going to repeat back what it hears and we'll take a look on the screen. Let's zoom in on the screen so we can see some better Perfect. All right, we saw it clean right up, zoom right in on that frequency, and display some magic. So that works. All right, a big thank you to Roger over at RNL Electronics for sending this into the channel for us to play with. Uh, this is the website for the Tiny SA, and it is fifty-four dollars and ninety-five cents currently and has a whole bunch of features. 320 by 240 pixel screen. The screen itself is actually very well laid out in terms of what you can see on it and what you can use on it. And it is pretty usable. Uh, it is a little tiny at 2.8 inches, but not too bad. The software kinda needs some work, but the software was made after the device was made. The device is fully usable from the screen. The software is just a, an added feature bonus. So lots and lots of features on the website to check out. Uh, I'm not going to read these to you, but you can definitely check out the website. There is a link down below to grab this. Tell him that T.O. sent you. That way he knows that uh, YouTube is having some effect and people are enjoying ham radio content on YouTube. Okay, folks, that was the Tiny SA Spectrum Analyzer, SA for Spectrum Analyzer. All Spectrum Analyzers need to have four major functions on them. They need to be able to set a frequency, you need to set a reference level, you need to set a resolution bandwidth, the, the width of the signal that you're looking at, and um, what was number four? Oh, the span. The span between the start and the stop and the, the center of where you want your frequency to go. So I showed real quick how this thing could be used to listen in on the uh, exchange that goes between my HT and my all-star node. My HT is over there, my all-star node's over there. And it picked up on it, it did the thing, it zoomed right on in, it, it was perfect, it did what it was supposed to do. A couple of other things that you can do with this, if you are trying to chase down a signal, um, you can try and figure out where it is, what it is, what it does, and figure it out. So if you have like an old uh, wireless microphone laying around, um, you can figure out what frequency it works on and maybe do some work with that frequency. If you are trying to chase down some RFI in your QTH area or the area that you happen to be operating in, you can do that as well. Um, if you are building a radio and you want to verify that it's putting a signal out and doesn't have any strange harmonics on it, you can do that also. There's a lot more to it than that. I don't know a whole lot about these things. I just got this one from Roger at RNL Electronics. Thank you, Roger. Very awesome. And uh, thanks again for supporting the Youth on the Air camp that happened uh, a little while ago in Ohio. That was also fantastic. So what do we do from here? What I'm thinking that we should do is join up on Toad's Discord. There is a link in the description down below. There will be a test tools room, test and evaluation equipment room in there, channel in there, and we can meet up there and start playing with these things and figure them out. And if we start getting some pretty interesting stuff, I'll make some videos so that we can share all of that knowledge back out with the community and ham it forward that way. So thanks for being awesome. Links in the description. We'll see you in the next one.